So, a while back I created this video, the Nest from Scratch, how to set up Nest.js from scratch, and the goal was to actually create a project using the Nest.js framework. Um, but as you can see, I kind of got sidetracked with Angular, but so I want to actually get back to it. So just a little bit of background for what Nest.js is. It's a Node.js server-side framework. <laughs> it um, is extremely um, heavily influenced by Angular. And some background of that, Angular was influenced by um, .NET and Java Spring Framework. So Angular is a way of getting the front end to look more like the back end. And then Nest.js is getting a node back end to look more like the M enterprise <coughs> uh, level server side framework. And it's hev as I mentioned, it's heavily influenced by Angular. So certain things look a lot like Angular code with these decorators as also using modules. Um, so it looks like this. And <coughs> I also have a hard time coming up with an idea for an app, and I came across uh, this website, and it kind of made me want to uh, implement my own version of it. So this is Idea Machine. It's a Twitter, Reddit type of application that basically lets you post ideas. So. That is what we're going to try to build. Um, so, so the first thing we want to do is um, <clears throat> let's first go into documentation. And, oh, that's, that's cute. The hamburger menu is at an actual hamburger. Anyways, um, so we're going to be using the Nest.js CLI, which you can install using an NPM using this line. And we're going to create a new project using nest new and I created a video on how to set up nest.js from scratch but we're gonna <clears throat> take the shortcut and let the CLI to scaffold out our project for us so let's clear first go into the directory we want to hold all of our projects and that's going to be in tutorials for me. And we're just going to do nest new, and I'm, I'm going to call it ideas API. And description, I leave blank for now, version 0.00. .00. Author is me. Yours will be your name, obviously. And we just wait. And I'm going to be using yarn for my package manager. And this will take a while. All right, once <clears throat> that is done, it it may take a couple of minutes, but uh, after that, just uh, open up ideas into your favorite code editor. I'm using Visual Studio Code, as you can see with the command line that I did. And the only thing I did right now is um just to create a basic project idea. So. Um, so just ideas app. I didn't want to overwrite the readme just so because it looks pretty cool actually when you commit this to github. It's just pretty uh, complicated. Um, so here is basically what's gonna happen. The app is gonna be in the style of reddit and twitter where we're able to create and post ideas. And the user stories is basically the requirements <clears throat> that I've set for this application. So we're going to be able to authenticate. Uh, we're going to be able to do all the CRUD applications for ideas, as well as upvoting and downvoting, and bookmarking. Um, and then comments. I'm going to put a question mark here, uh, just because this might be a feature that we want 
But then again, since these are such small uh, posts, we might not want it. And then finally, the biggest challenge for me is going to be um, implementing real-time data <coughs> for all the new ideas. So we're going to be using uh, WebSockets, and mostly because I wanted to create a project using WebSockets that isn't just another chat application. And I, I think this is a, a interesting way to, to do it. And then now for the stack. So our database is going to be Postgres. Uh, you can substitute any SQL database here. So my MySQL or Oracle or SQL Server if you know how to set it up with Node, although I wouldn't. Um, and this particular project that we're inside of is the Nest.js part. And we're going to implement both a REST API and a GraphQL API. And then for the front end, we're going to have two different front ends. Uh, one to interact with the REST API portion of our server, and another to interact with our GraphQL um, implementation. For the REST API, we're going to be using Angular. And I'm going to also include NGRX for state management. Um, and then for our GraphQL uh, server, we're going to be using React. Uh, mostly because Apollo Client is, has some really good tooling with React um, instead of Angular. And then if I am really, really up for it, I'm going to try to do it in React Native. Um, I don't, we'll see how ambitious I am when we get there. As for the timeline, I'm going to try to finish up all of the API requirements before we move on to the front end. And uh, yeah, that's the basic timeline of this application. It is a, uh, it's going to be a lot bigger than I initially thought, but I think it'll be fun. Now, before I leave, I just want to clean this up a little bit. Um, I'm going to keep the test in here. Um, I don't normally write tests, but I feel like it's something that I should get better at. So I'm going to leave the test. The only thing I want to get rid of is the hot module replacement because um, we're not really going to need it. So just uh, get rid of all the things required or related to that. So let's do the webpack config as well as source main.hmr.ts. And this is deleted now. And then in our package JSON, that would be, let's see, where is it? Um, okay, just webpack, I guess. Um, see, I don't think we need all of these scripts. Um, so, format. Yeah, I don't need format because I I use prettier on save, and then lint. I don't use a linter because I, I use the formatter instead. Um, hot module replacement is also not necessary. Start prod looks good. Um, Rimrath is a a package that you need for Windows, but we're we're in a Unix environment so we just do an RMRF and do, 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 do. that looks good dependencies dev dependencies um, yeah that looks fine to me alright I will see you guys in the next video